you're here to learn about nutrition and exercise during pregnancy. Now, you're probably aware that exercise and the right nutrition can do worlds of good for your health, and it's even more important for your growing baby. So for the next few minutes, I'll talk about what it means to eat healthy, go over something called the plate method, and review some foods and other things to stay away from. Then I'll talk about healthy weight gain, and we'll wrap it up by talking about exercise and do some goal setting. This whole program should take about 35 minutes. All right, I think that's it. Let's get started. A healthy lifestyle is really important during pregnancy for both you and your baby. It can actually impact the health of your baby for years to come. So this program will review healthy eating, gaining the right amount of weight, and being physically active. If you've been pregnant before, you'll probably know a lot of this. But whether it's new or a refresher, it's important information, so stick with me. And just so you know, you don't have to watch this all at one time, and you can watch it more than once, too. Okay, before we go any further, let me say congratulations. Pregnancy can be a very exciting time, but I know it can also be a little frightening and overwhelming. Try not to worry. You've got people to help along the way. Of course, you may have family and friends to support you. And you've also got a doctor, nurse, practitioner, or midwife. To make things easy, I'll refer to this person as a doctor and call her a she. And you can ask her as many questions as you'd like. In fact, it's best to bring a list of questions to any appointments so you'll remember them. And order them so any questions you'd like answered first are at the top. That way you'll be sure to get to the most pressing ones. For example, it's important to talk to your doctor about taking a prenatal vitamin. She'll probably want you to take one every day. It helps make sure you and your baby are getting the right and enough nutrients. So be sure to ask her about this. Two nutrients that are very important during pregnancy are iron and folate. And it's hard to get enough of these from food alone. Folate, or folic acid, helps stop problems with the way your baby can grow or develop called birth defects. It specifically helps prevent neural tube defects or problems with the baby's brain or spine. So prenatal vitamins have enough folate to help with that. Now, if you're not pregnant yet, but you're trying, you'll need to get enough folate, at least 400 micrograms each day, for one or more months before getting pregnant. Many multivitamins have enough folate, or you could start taking a prenatal vitamin, which you can just keep taking once you're pregnant. You could also take a folate supplement instead. Just check any labels to make sure whichever one you take has at least 400 micrograms. And it's okay if they have more than that. Iron is another nutrient women need more of when they're pregnant. Iron is part of red blood cells, which deliver oxygen to your body and your baby. You need more when you're pregnant because your body makes more blood to help get enough oxygen to your baby. Without enough iron, women can get anemia. That can make them feel really tired and weak. And if it's not treated, it can raise the risk for things like going into labor early. And it's actually really common for pregnant women to have low iron. But don't worry, aside from getting iron in the prenatal vitamin, it's in many foods like red meat, like beef, poultry, like chicken and turkey, fish, beans, peas, spinach, prune juice, and it's added to some foods like bread and cereal. And so you know, it's easier for your body to take in any iron you eat if you also eat foods with vitamin C at the same time. Vitamin C is in things like citrus, strawberries, red peppers, and tomatoes. So for example, have an orange with iron fortified cereal or chicken with tomato sauce. That way your body will be able to take in a lot more iron. And if you become low in iron, your doctor may ask you to take an iron supplement too. All right, even though prenatal vitamins give you many of the nutrients you need, you'll still need to eat foods with lots of vitamins and minerals. That's because eating well and getting the right nutrition during pregnancy helps your baby grow strong and healthy. It also helps prevent birth defects, like a cleft palate or problems with the brain and spinal cord. The studies have even shown that good nutrition may lower the risk of conditions like diabetes, obesity, and heart disease, and can help with bone health later in a baby's life. 
And this may be surprising, but if you want your baby to like fruits and vegetables, pregnancy is the time to load up on these. That's because the flavors you eat can be passed to your baby. So there's a better chance your baby will like the flavors you eat while you're pregnant. And eating right is, of course, important for you too. It may even lower the risk of things like postpartum depression, where women have feelings of sadness after giving birth. Now, if you're not pregnant yet, you can make sure your body has what it needs now to help you stay healthy once you're pregnant. So what foods have lots of nutrients? As I'm sure you guessed, fruits and vegetables top the list. You want to try to get some fruits or vegetables at every meal, and it's best to have them for snacks as well. Whole grains are also really good for you. These are things like 100% whole wheat bread, oatmeal, barley, brown rice, and bran cereal, or even things you might not have heard of before, like bulgur and quinoa. All grains or breads have carbohydrates or carbs, which give you energy. But one reason whole grains are so good for you is they have fiber. Fiber is a type of carb your body can't digest or break down easily. And that's actually a good thing because it helps you feel full, is good for your heart, and helps you avoid constipation where it's painful or difficult to poop, which is common during pregnancy. Along with fiber, whole grains also have more nutrients than refined grains, things like white bread or rice and chips or crackers. Of course, it's okay to have things like white rice with dinner. Just try to make sure at least half your grains each day are whole grains. To do this, you could choose oatmeal or bran cereal instead of a sugary cereal at breakfast. Choose plain or lightly salted popcorn instead of chips or crackers or use 100% whole wheat bread instead of white bread on your sandwich. Small switches like these can really make a difference over the course of the day and week. All right, dairy also has important nutrients like calcium and vitamin D, which help build your baby's growing bones, teeth, and heart. Eating three servings of low fat and fat-free dairy, like 1% milk and low fat yogurt and cottage cheese each day will help you get enough calcium and vitamin D. And so you know, one serving is one cup of milk, one container or cup of yogurt, or two slices of reduced fat or low fat cheese, or one and a half ounces. Now, if you can't have dairy, you can also get calcium from soy or almond milk, broccoli, dark leafy greens, and sardines. Of course, there's also some calcium in prenatal vitamins. But if you can't have dairy, your doctor may ask you to take a separate calcium supplement too. Some supplements are easier for your body to take in than others. So be sure to talk to your doctor if you can't have dairy. All right, like I said, dairy also has vitamin D, but you can get it from salmon too. It's also added to foods like cereal and oatmeal and some egg yolks. If they have it, it will say on the package. And our bodies can even make vitamin D when the sun shines on our arms or legs for about 15 minutes when we're not wearing sunscreen. But sometimes people need a vitamin D supplement, especially if they don't eat a lot of foods that have it. You can ask your doctor to check how much vitamin D is in your body to see if you need a supplement. By the way, if you need to take a prenatal vitamin and another supplement, like an iron or calcium supplement, you should not take them at the same time. So be sure to talk to your doctor about the best time to take each of them. And this is very important. Even if you need more of certain nutrients, say your doctor says you need to get more iron, do not double up on your prenatal vitamin. Now, the dose or amount of your prenatal vitamin might be one pill or two pills, but do not take more than one dose a day. It can be dangerous. Talk to your doctor if you have any questions. Okay, it's also important to focus on heart-healthy protein. Heart-healthy is just what it sounds like, good for your heart. Protein is a part of every cell in our bodies. It helps keep us full and satisfied between meals, and it makes sure tissues and organs like the brain grow normal and healthy in babies. Foods with heart-healthy protein include fish and seafood, just not fried. Certain meats called lean meats, for example, cuts of pork or beef with the word loin in it, or lean hamburger meat. Poultry, like chicken and turkey. Nuts and seeds, like walnuts and sunflower seeds. 
beans, like black beans and soybeans, dairy, and tofu. Now, even though you've probably always been told to stay away from fat, some of it, especially heart-healthy fat, is actually a really good thing. It can be found in foods like nuts and seeds, fish, avocados, olives, and certain oils, like using olive oil in salad dressing. All right, I know that may have been a lot to take in. To sum things up, you should ask about a prenatal vitamin and eat foods with many nutrients. So let's talk next about how you can make that happen. The plate method is one way you can get healthy foods at each meal. And all you need is a plate. I'm not talking about the biggest plate you've got. It should be a smaller one, about nine inches across. Okay, here's how it works. Imagine the plate is divided into four even sections. Fill half the plate or two sections with fruits and vegetables that don't have many carbs. So in this section, stay away from peas, corn, or potatoes, but you can have pretty much anything else. In the third section, add any grains or starchy veggies you want. Whole grains or starchy veggies are best. So those potatoes can go here, but don't go piling anything too high. They should only be about the size of your fist. The last section of the plate is for protein. Again, that's things like meat, fish, eggs, or tofu. And that should be about the size of a deck of cards. It's best to choose heart-healthy proteins like chicken, beans, or salmon. Now, if you're eating something like meat lasagna, which has both protein and carbs, one portion, that's about one cup, will count as half your plate, or two sections. And the other half should be fruits and non-starchy veggies. One last thing. As far as a drink goes, it's best to stick with water, unsweetened tea, or low-fat or fat-free milk. Drinks like soda and sweetened beverages like sweet tea or lemonade have calories, but little or no nutrition. And some diet drinks are okay, but check with your doctor first, because it depends on what's added to make them taste sweet. You should aim to drink about 10 cups of fluids like water each day. It's important because pregnant women need more fluid and can get dehydrated more easily. This is when your body doesn't have enough water. Okay, the plate method is a great way to make sure you're getting healthy foods. But like many things, it can be easier said than done. That's because many pregnant women have cravings and feel a strong connection to their body. And they think they should listen to what their body wants. And while having cravings for things like fruit and salad isn't a bad thing, it isn't really your body's way of saying you need certain nutrients. Of course, those are the times when listening to your body is a good thing. But there are times when it's best not to give in. Craving things like fast food or cookies most likely comes from seeing or hearing about those foods or feeling stressed. Of course, it's totally fine to have these treats once in a while, but for the most part, it's a good idea to have less sugary drinks like soda, sweets like candy and desserts, fried foods, snacks like chips, fat foods like sausage, bologna, and hot dogs, and a lot of fast foods and restaurants. These foods usually have a lot of calories, but few nutrients, and they can have other things like sugar, salt, or fats that aren't heart healthy, and those can raise your risk for things like heart problems and diabetes. Of course, we're all human, and eating healthy doesn't mean you're expected to avoid these things completely, but it's best to only enjoy them every now and again. All right, let's move on. At this point, do you want to make any notes? Okay, let's move on. Now that you have a better idea of what to eat, let's talk about some things to stay away from. First of all, there are certain kinds of fish that you should not eat at all. These include king mackerel, swordfish, tilefish, and shark. Why? Well, these have more of something called mercury, which is a metal that can cause birth defects if you get too much. But some fish and shellfish are very good to eat. They have those heart-healthy proteins and fats, which are important for development of your baby's brain and eyes. For example, try to eat things like shrimp, catfish, halibut, pollock, tilapia, salmon, sardines, and trout. Try to eat these kinds of fish about two times a week. And tuna is also good to eat, but you should have no more than one can of tuna a week. Now, some foods can also lead to food poisoning or illness. 
You may have heard of things like listeria or salmonella. And food poisoning is more serious in pregnant women because it puts your growing baby at risk. You see, it can cause you to feel sick to your stomach, throw up, or get dehydrated. Some can even cause flu-like problems, cause you to deliver the baby too early, or even lead to miscarriage where the pregnancy ends. I know that's really scary. So to be on the safe side, make sure everything you eat is cooked all the way through. You should stay away from any raw, rare, or undercooked fish, eggs, or meat. That means no cookie dough or Caesar salads, which have raw eggs, rare hamburgers, undercooked eggs, or sushi. Of course you can have eggs. They just need to be cooked until both the yolks and whites are firm and not at all runny. So scrambled, hard boiled, and over hard are okay as long as they're cooked all the way through. And you'll need to make sure meats are cooked well enough by checking their internal temperature with a meat thermometer. For example, beef and pork should be cooked until the thermometer reaches 145 degrees when put into the very middle of the meat. Ground beef or pork needs to get to 160 degrees. And poultry, like chicken and turkey, including ground poultry, should be cooked to 165 degrees. All right, you also need to stay away from unpasteurized products. That's things like raw milk and cheeses like brie, goat cheese, feta, and blue cheese. Raw sprouts and refrigerated pate, meat spreads, or smoked seafood. Now, hot dogs, deli meats, and cold cuts are okay as long as you heat them until they're steaming hot before you eat them. Some other things you can do to make sure you don't get sick or get food poisoning. Keep your refrigerator temperature lower than 40 degrees. Wash fruits and vegetables before eating them. Keep raw meats away from foods that are ready to eat, like fruits and vegetables or cooked meats. So have one cutting board for meat and another for other things like fruits, veggies, and breads. You'll also want to refrigerate any leftovers within two hours. And be sure to reheat them very well before you eat them again. Now, this may go without saying, but Wash your hands often, before, during, and after mealtimes. This is especially true after working outside, doing things like gardening or yard work. All right, you may also be wondering about how much caffeine is okay to drink. Well, you should aim for no more than about 200 to 300 milligrams a day, and that's about 12 ounces, which is a little more than one cup of coffee. And a can of soda has anywhere from 25 to 50 milligrams of caffeine. Getting too much can lead to a baby being too small when it's born, and really high amounts of caffeine might even play a role in causing a miscarriage. Again, some caffeine is perfectly safe. Just try to limit how much you drink. That means staying away from things like energy drinks. These aren't safe. Not only do they have too much caffeine, but they also have other ingredients that have not been tested in pregnant women. All right, there are a few more things you should cut out completely while you're pregnant. Do not have alcoholic drinks, smoke, or use other recreational drugs. You've probably heard it before, but it's really important. Why? Well, drinking can cause major birth defects, like problems with the baby's brain and spine, and can even affect a baby's future behavior, how they grow, and their intelligence. Recreational drugs can cause babies to be born too small, too early, called premature, and cause problems with how they grow. And smoking cigarettes lowers how much blood and oxygen the baby gets. And that means more risk for miscarriage and the baby can have problems growing. You should also know that it's just as important not to smoke once your baby is born. That's because smoke may put babies at more risk for something called SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome. With SIDS, babies can die in their sleep. And that's true whether it's secondhand smoke, where the baby breathes in the smoke, or thirdhand smoke, where smoke clings to clothes, blankets, or other things in the house. I know that's not fun to hear, but that's why it's so important to quit. Talk to your doctor if you need help to stop drinking, smoking, or using recreational drugs. She can help. Okay, next we'll talk about how much weight you should gain during pregnancy. It can be hard for some women to see their bodies growing and changing but it's natural and needed for your baby to grow strong and healthy. So why do you need to gain weight? 
Of course, part of the weight is the baby itself. There are also things that help your baby grow, like the fluid it swims in. You also have more blood running through your body to help bring oxygen and nutrients to the baby. And some of the weight comes from storing fat, protein, and other nutrients. Finally, your uterus gets bigger and your breasts grow so they can hold breast milk. So what's the right amount of weight to gain? Well, it really depends on how much you weighed before becoming pregnant. Women who are considered underweight should gain between 28 and 40 pounds. Those of a normal weight need to gain between 25 and 35 pounds. And for women who are overweight, it's between 15 and 25 pounds. Finally, those who are considered obese need to gain between 11 and 20 pounds. By the way, these recommendations are for women having one baby. Women having twins or triplets will need to gain more. And again, it all depends on your pre-pregnancy weight. It's a good idea for all women to talk to their doctor about how much weight is healthy for them to gain during pregnancy. That's because it's really important not to gain too much weight. It can increase your risk for certain things during pregnancy, including high blood pressure, the need to have a C-section, which is surgery to get the baby out instead of natural delivery. And it can also lead to gestational diabetes or diabetes while pregnant. All pregnant women have a test to check for gestational diabetes. Gaining too much during pregnancy can also make it hard to lose weight after childbirth, and that makes it more likely women will become overweight, which can lead to health problems like heart disease. Unfortunately, putting on too much weight can also affect the baby. Possible problems include being born too early and troubles during childbirth, like injuries. It can also make it more likely your baby will be overweight when they're older, and you should know too little weight can be a problem as well. It can lead to the baby being born too early or too small. And these things can cause serious health problems for some babies. I know all of that can be a little frightening to hear. But your doctor will watch how much you gain throughout your pregnancy. And she can tell you if you need to gain more or if you're on track to gain too much. If you have any questions about the right amount of weight to gain, talk to her about it. All right, no matter how much you need to gain, you should put on very little weight, usually about two to five pounds in the first trimester. This is the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. During the rest of your pregnancy, weight gain should be steady, about a half to one pound each week, but it depends on how much you need to gain overall. All right, even though you've probably heard that pregnant women need to eat for two, that just isn't true. You do not need to double what you eat. In fact, you don't need any more calories in the first trimester. During the second trimester, weeks 13 through 28, you'll need no more than 350 extra calories each day. And you should have no more than 450 extra calories a day in the third trimester, the last 12 weeks of pregnancy. Now, 350 or 450 calories really isn't all that much. To give you an idea, that's about how many calories you get in a snack or light meal, like a peanut butter sandwich one cup of cereal with low-fat milk and a banana, or an apple with a slice of cheese and some whole grain crackers. Many times you won't have to try to get these extra calories. As your pregnancy moves forward, you'll probably be more hungry than normal. All right, one time when you may not feel very hungry or very well is with morning sickness. And if you've already experienced this, you know it's when you feel sick to your stomach and can even throw up. It's really common during the first trimester. And as you may have guessed, it happens a lot in the morning, but it can happen at other times of the day too. But it's good to know that even though you may not feel well, the baby is perfectly fine. And the good news is there are things you can do to help, like get enough sleep, take your prenatal vitamin with food, eat small meals throughout the day instead of three big meals, or eat a few crackers before getting out of bed in the morning. You'll also want to avoid spicy and fatty foods, drink ginger ale or ginger tea, and include foods with protein at meals and snacks, things like meat, peanut butter, nuts, milk, or hummus. And try not to have foods and drinks at the same time, so eat and have water or other drinks between meals. If you can't keep food or drinks down for a couple days or you begin to lose weight, call your doctor right away. There are medications and certain vitamins that may help. All right, one more thing before we move on. 
and it might seem like it's too soon to talk about. But after the baby is born, losing the weight you gain during pregnancy is really important. Because like I said, extra weight can cause health problems, like heart disease and even diabetes. Why is it good to know this now? Well, the more women gain during pregnancy, the harder it is for them to lose. Of course, it takes some time to lose your pregnancy weight, and you should do it slowly and safely. A lot of the things we've gone over, like eating foods with nutrients and using the plate method, can also help with weight loss after. And although you may hear some women say breastfeeding can really help with weight loss, it really depends on the person. It helps some women, but not others. With that said, there are many benefits of breastfeeding. Now, if this isn't your first pregnancy, you may have been told before that you shouldn't really exercise, but that advice has changed a lot. For most women, exercise during pregnancy is not only perfectly safe, but has many benefits. It can lower the risk of gestational diabetes and high blood pressure, help women avoid gaining too much weight, and help with some problems pregnant women may have, like low back pain, trouble sleeping, or constipation, where it's painful or difficult to poop. It even helps bring more blood and oxygen to your growing baby, and can have positive effects on your baby's health for years to come. Exercise can also help lower stress and feelings of depression or sadness and anxiety, both during pregnancy and as a new mom. Other things you can do after you have your baby are help you recover faster from delivery, which means you'll have an easier time caring for your little one. And it can lower your risk of long-term health conditions like diabetes and heart problems. Now, I know you may be thinking, I don't have the energy to exercise. I'm just so tired all the time. And that's a common complaint of many pregnant women. It's perfectly normal. But even though it sounds backwards, exercise can actually help you have more energy. And every little bit helps. If you feel so tired that all you can do is walk for 10 minutes, do it. But before you start anything, talk to your doctor. There are very few cases where exercise is not safe. For example, women with certain health conditions like severe heart problems, a high risk pregnancy, and women who have problems or complications with their pregnancy may not be able to exercise. So your doctor can talk to you about this if it's you. But again, for most women, exercise is really safe and has many benefits. If you were exercising before getting pregnant, you can keep doing most things you were before. We'll talk about a few things you should not do in a minute. Just keep in mind you may not be able to work as hard, especially as your pregnancy moves forward. So just listen to your body. Try to get about 30 minutes of exercise every day, or at least on most days of the week. But if you're new to exercise, start slow. Try doing something for 15 minutes twice a day instead of 30 minutes in a row, and do that three times a week. Then you can work your way up to every day. Things like swimming and water aerobics are great because being in the water helps support your weight and take pressure off your lower back. Other good exercises include indoor or stationary cycling or biking, which also lets you get off your feet, prenatal yoga and stretching classes, and walking. Walking is one of the best exercises. It's easy to do, you don't have to go to the gym, and it's something really all pregnant women can do. Try walking at a pretty quick pace to get the most benefits. Now, aside from heart pumping, cardio exercises like swimming and walking, it's good to do muscle building or strength exercises as well. Things like lifting weights, doing squats and push-ups. It helps prepare you for lifting, holding, and nursing your baby. Now, with all kinds of exercise, there are a few things you want to keep in mind. After the first trimester, do not do any exercises while lying on your back for things like sit-ups or certain Pilates moves. It can make it hard for blood to go back up to your heart. Also, make sure to breathe, especially when using weights. And keep a good posture, knees slightly bent and feet shoulder width apart. Also use smooth, controlled movements. Do not lift weight over your head during the third trimester. It can lead to an injury. And before and after you work out, drink plenty of water. And it's not a bad idea to have a small snack too. Now, even when women know how great exercise is for them and the baby, they can have trouble actually doing it. There are many reasons, like finding the time, getting to the gym or park, work or other responsibilities, or feeling really tired. 
And while these are all real obstacles, it's important to find ways to work around them. If time or transportation is an issue, you can try exercise DVDs or shows, walking in place during commercials when watching TV, or you can ask a family member to watch any other kids so you can go on a walk. The bottom line is, exercise really is good for both you and your baby, so do whatever you can. All right, there are a few activities pregnant women should not do because they are more likely to cause falls or injuries. For example, do not scuba dive, ride horses, ski, or play contact sports like soccer. Okay, you should stop exercising right away and call your doctor if you find it very hard to breathe. There's pain in your chest. You have painful contractions. You have blood coming from your vagina. Or there's a gush of fluid from your vagina. Also, stop and call if you feel dizzy or faint. All right, I know we've gone over a lot when it comes to both nutrition and exercise. And you may be wondering how you're going to do it all. The good news is you do not want to try to change everything all at once. That can be overwhelming and hard to stick with. So it's best to start by making a few small changes that work for you and make those a part of your regular routine. Some things that have helped other pregnant women stick to their changes include cutting up vegetables for snacks ahead of time to make it easier to eat more, walking with a friend or spouse to get some exercise, and asking someone to help with things like grocery shopping to free up time for healthy habits. You might actually be surprised how, over time, small changes can make a big difference in the health of you and your baby.